Hello, and you're welcome to my channel. My name is Alfred Apia. I am a graduate student at the Columbia Theological Seminary, Atlanta, in the United States. Today, we are going to talk about secret to getting your F1 visa approved. And we are going to do it right now. First, you must have an eligible sponsoring institution. You must have an approved school that will sponsor your studies and issue your I-20 for your F1 visa. So, a school that is an approved school must first offer you admission and be willing and prepared to offer you an I-20. That is di different and separate from your admission letter. So, the I-20 contains information about the date and period you are going to study, the starting period and the ending period, sponsorship, total amount, the cost of your studies and the amount you are bringing or the scholarship you have been offered. So your school will have a special person called DSO who is officially recognized by the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service or department to work on your I-20 for you. So the, the, this person, as I said, will, will be in touch, will, will stay in communication with you and get the necessary information from you so that he can prepare your I-20 for you. Again, for the purposes of visa interview, you must have basic knowledge about the school you are about to attend. So they may ask questions like, what school? Will you be attending? Why are you attending this particular school? Name specific reasons. What degree are you pursuing? Why did you choose to study in the United States but not in any other country? Or why are you not studying in your own country? Any specific reason? Any idea about the location of the school and other basic information about the school? It doesn't mean you are going to ask you these questions. But you must be prepared for questions like this. In my case, I was asked, why am I attending Columbia Theological Seminary, but not Trinity Theological Seminary in Ghana? So I explained that I want to have a feel of the cross-cultural exposure as a minister. You know, working with people from different backgrounds, it is important that you have other perspectives about how to approach things and i explained that being in ghana for so long being through the ghanaian system ghanaian leadership youth leadership i have a lot of understanding about the ghanaian culture and ministry in ghana i want to have a, a different exposure so that i can perfectly articulate i can perfectly engage people from different backgrounds and different cultural understanding that was the reason i gave so you must be prepared to explain why you are going to study in the specific school you have applied for. The second most important thing is proof of foreign residence and ties to home. This means you will need to be able to prove you have a strong ties to your home country, that there is something that will hold you to come back home after your studies. So sometimes you need to prove that you have a job or you have a job after you complete. You need to prove that you have a family, a wife, husband, children, or you have a girlfriend, a boyfriend in a relationship, something that will connect you back to your country. It may be an asset, a car, a land, something. In my case, I explained that I am going to study. I want to be a minister. I want to be a chaplain. So after studying i will come back to ghana and be a chaplain in one of the senior high schools so i explained that i have an organization that is willing to to accept me after i, I come back and i showed the letter proving that yes there's an organization willing and able to absorb me after my studies so with that i proved to them that I have ties back home. This is very important. Most people that are refused, sometimes they, they will be asking questions about your age, your marital status, are you employed? This is important. You have to explain, show enough evidence, either by document or by words, 
trying to prove to them that you you return and that you not overstay after your studies in the United States. At the interview, you should be able to prove how will you better yourself and your home country after you obtain the degree. So for me, they ask me, what is so special? What is so different? How will I contribute to, to the organization and how will I contribute to my country? And as I, I said in my first point that I talked about cross-cultural experience, that I believe that my exposure will help me contribute meaningfully to the organization and bring into the organization and into my country different perspective, different, different way of approaching, doing things. And the consular was happy. So you must be able to connect ties to home with the relevance of your studies to you as a person and to your country. That is what they are looking for. How important, how relevant, how significant would this studies, this uh, school or this degree you are going to pursue be for you as a person. So this is where if you are an accounting student and you are applying to study history, you should explain why you are switching from accounting to history. I was asked, why am I switching from accounting to theology? It's different field altogether. So I explained that I am a youth leader in church. I have been involved in voluntary work in church for a long time. So because of that, I have seen that I have been called into the ministry. I have something that I can contribute. And my degree, my uh, understanding in accounting is important for me to better appreciate my Master of Divinity program. So you see how I connected why uh, I am switching from accounting to MDiv. It is important. I connected that to my voluntary work, which I have explained, shown on my DS-160 form with the consoler. So on my form, he has seen that I am already into youth work, into church voluntary work. So it makes sense that though I am an accounting student, I am having become a Bachelor of Commerce as a degree, I am going into theology because I am doing voluntary work. I have been in voluntary service with a church. I have been linked. I have been in association with a church for such a long time. So it makes sense that I am going to do theology. So you must be able to connect, explain if you are switching, why you are switching from a specific course or a specific field to another field. If you are not switching, you should be able to explain why the, the, the upgrade is important for you and for your country. Very important. Now, this is the most important secret. Financial support. You must be able to demonstrate that you have sufficient financial support for your studies abroad. Before you can show that, it is important that you have general knowledge about the total cost of your studies and your stay abroad. This will help you to mount a very good strategy in convincing the consoler in how you can support yourself during your stay abroad. But I always tell people, Financial support depends or varies from one person to another. And it depends on the case you are building for the consular to agree or to accept and to approve your visa. My first visa interview was rejected. And I found why. I went for the interview and the consular asked me, who is sponsoring your studies? I said, my sister. She asked, any financial statement? I gave my sister's financial statement. Indeed, there was enough money to support that. Funds in it wasn't a problem. Now, the next question was, why is my sister sponsoring me? I explained. After he said he cannot, he's sorry, he cannot give me the visa. Now, I realized that how will studying theology be relevant to my sister? Why would my sister have to raise that such amount of money to sponsor me to become a pastor? It doesn't make sense. So in my case, I didn't need a family to sponsor me. I needed an organization, a church, 
uh, and a non-profit making organization someone may go with a family and the person may get approved that is a that is another case but in my case i realized that I am going to study Master of Divinity. It's a theological studies. And after that, I'm going to be a pastor. And you are going to work with the church. So, what is the importance? How relevant will you being a pastor be to your family? <laughs> at, the extent, at the extent that they are raising that money to sponsor you. So, my first visa interview was rejected. So, after I have to come back, look for an organization that is willing to support me with a statement. I did that and when I went, my visa was approved. So, you see, it depends on each and every person. If you are going to study medicine, if you are going to study accounting, history, MBA, it makes sense that your father, your sister, your auntie is sponsoring you. That is more like a, a personal field. But in terms of theology, it, 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 it doesn't make sense that your sister is sponsoring you. In most cases, it is important if you have a little bit scholarship, either internally from the school or an external scholarship. I had a, a free tuition scholarship, so I only needed to prove my stay in the United States, how I can pay my accommodation insurance, how I can pay for my feeding and other extra costs that comes with my studies without tuition. So it is important. And proving financial support is one of the major areas that the consulates or visa uh, visas are refused. So it is important that you prepare well, you raise or you mount a very good strategy, you talk to people who are willing to sponsor you, support you with good documentation. And there are times that you go there and they don't even check it. Because when I, I, <laughs> I spoke to one of my friends, he went and he said, his father is sponsoring him. They asked for the work that their father is doing and they didn't even check their, their financial statement. They didn't believe him and they rejected him. So it is important. Financial strategy. Mount a very good financial strategy for getting your visa. That is the third secret. The fourth thing is for you to prepare in advance. It is important that you get your admission letter early enough. Get your I-20 early enough for you to apply for the visa early enough. Make sure you follow the timeline. If you don't get accepted into your school in time, then you won't get approved for your visa. So you must constantly check up on your school, work with the DSO. Make sure that your I-20 arrived early. So that you can prepare a very good strategy for your visa interview. After you have done all this, just pray. Have faith. Trust in yourself. Go in confidence and relax. I believe your visa will be approved. I did a video on some mistakes that people do when they are applying for US visa. I did those mistakes in my first visa interview and I had my visa rejected. I will leave the link to that video in the video description. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and give it a thumbs up if you like this video. As always, theology is fine. Trust me.